morning. God is good to us and He leads us the ways that He always desires and always desires. This morning, we are on the third Sunday of the year. Lent season is always a remembrance of what God did for saving this world from sin. And as we remember God's doing, we should keep in our mind that our response to that group is very important. Lent season is not the time where people often feel sad. They don't eat meat. They don't have any good uh, you know, things at home. And, uh, you know, it's a very sad state of Christians for 40 days. They say, our Lord died. Why did he die? He died for our sins, to give us hope, to give us life. The Tamil Christian community is very sad to see one thing. You know, 40 days goes in Lent season, so they don't, uh, don't do any good things in their homes. No, no uh, bridegroom coming or, uh, you know, visitation of all these things, they stop that. And Sundays, of course, nobody does. 50 to Sundays goes. So 40 days and again 50 to Sundays, almost two months. You know, and the, the rest of the time, Christmas season comes. So again, nothing has been done. For half the year goes, right? Only one or two months they have to do all the good things in home. So what I'm trying to say, the, uh, the outlook of Christians of what they have to do has been more traditional. But God should give us insight to see things in a different way. Today the title of my sermon is God's Grace in Tight Situations. God's Grace in Tight Situations. Have you ever been in a tight situation? You know, uh, our buses give us that kind of thing, right? Once upon a time you get into a bus, you cannot move. You know, you're trampled. You know, somebody will be squeezing you from this side, somebody at the back, and you are there uncomfortable. You feel, when will I get down of this bus? That is, we often, you know, do that in a day to do life. But really in our life, have you ever been in a tight situation? A man who was speaking about himself once said, I went to work one morning as usual. My boss called me into his chamber and said that I'm tired from the job. I asked him why. He said, I, oh, I cannot give you reasons. You're fine, that's all. This man didn't know what happened to him. He goes to his colleagues and asks him, what did I do? What did I, um, uh, uh, what happened to me that he has fired me from the job? And they gave him reasons which he couldn't accept. He said, I'm just the I'm fired. He went home, losing his job. After a week, it came a time that he has to take his daughter to the hospital because he had a lot on his shoulder, on her shoulder. She was 13 years old. The doctor, after all the tests, diagnosed that she has cancer. Man, he lost his job. The daughter has cancer. And after some time, there was a small misunderstanding between him and his wife. The wife, all of a sudden, walked out of the marriage. He pleaded with her, trying to explain to her, but she said, no. He said, this is a simple thing. We can sort it out. But she said, no. I want to leave. A man lost his job with a sick child. Wife living. No money to survive. No money for the daughter's medical expenditure. That is something called a nice place. If that would have happened to me, I would have questioned God and saying, are you there, God? Are you there? I would have said, Lord, I walked with you. I had a good relationship with you. Anything and everything I did, I speak with you before I do it. 
And then why in my life all these things? It's the same question, the job you gave, the daughter you gave, the wife you gave, and I struggle today, all of them gone, all of them suffering. Maybe what about your promises that you gave? You said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. What happened to those promises? You said that you will lead me into green pastures. What about that? You said you will be there even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. What about that? And now I can understand why Jesus said on that cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken? He understood the time and the situation that he was in. The question is, where are you God? In this kind of situation. David has the problem with this. In Psalm 28, he cries to the Lord like this. He says, Psalm 28, he cries, he calls upon the Lord. He says, To you I call my God, my rock. Do not turn a deaf ear to me. For if you remain silent, I will be like those who have gone down into the He's crying to God, and God will answer. He's in a very tight situation. God will answer. And he's calling to God and saying, Why are you having a deaf ear? If you don't respond to me, I am like a person who is in the pit. Recently, I had this experience. One Wednesday after the Bible study, I went to Brooklyn. Usually, I do that. I just go over and have a look around. I'm just telling you, oh, the call from the pit cannot be heard. I went there, and our watchman, Mr. Kumar, he came at 5.30 and he fell into a pit. It's a 15 feet deep pit. He was dead. And after the Bible study, I went into Brooklyn and the whole area is down. Usually, he switches off the light, the light at 5.30. I tell him, don't switch on the light at 5.30. He switches on when it's getting down. So that day he was done. I went around looking for him. His room was locked. He was not there. Darkness everywhere. And I'm a little scared because we had some bear visiting that place. So I switched on two lights <coughs> and I called him. Where are you? And he said, I'm on the top. I'm on the top. And I, as I was speaking, as I was going, I could hear some kind of moan, you know, a phone ringing, moan somewhere. I went after that and I found this man at 8.15 in the bed. From 5.30 he was there in the bed, in the wet bed, for almost for two or three hours. Couldn't hear the cry of that man. He was shouting for a very long time. Nobody heard. And David experienced something like that. He says, I am like in the pit calling and you are not answering. And again we see David crying to the Lord in uh, well, chapter 31 of uh, Psalm where he said, in you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me from your in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge and a strong fortress to save me. From verses 9 to 10, he says, Be merciful, O Lord, for I am in distress. I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. I do not know what to do. My eyes are growing weak. My life is consumed by anguish. My ears Going by groaning. My strength fails. Help me, O Lord. People cry. They do not know where they are. The text, Exodus chapter 17, gives us a beautiful picture of a friend, <coughs> Moses. Moses is in a tight situation. Leading people from Israel 
They are in the wilderness. <clears throat> we know what is in the wilderness. Desert, hot sun, no shade, no water, no food. They are walking towards the promised land and they are here. Moses is here with these people in the obedience of God and because of the calling. And there the situation comes to him where people cry that there is no more. Go so chapter 17 uh, of Exodus. Set out from the desert of sin, it says. So not the sin that we talk about here also. Uh, no, this sin, desert of sin, is the name of all this. So they came to a place called desert of sin. And a miracle happened there. And they're moving out from the desert of sin towards the place. And the Bible says that they were traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. So as the Lord told them, they were moving. They were in obedience to God's word. They are in obedience to God. They were moving. And they came and they camped at a place called Rephidim. And the problem was there was no water. They were moving according to God's will. They were moving according to God's word. But they came to a place where a problem was there that there is no water. And you know, the people of Israel, very tough people, you know, they quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. And Moses said, why are you quarreling with me? Why are you putting the Lord to test? You know, why did he say that word, you're putting the Lord to test? Just go a few um, uh, chapters before, we have the miracles of God. Red Sea was parted. The whole congregation of Israel saw it. And Miriam singing a beautiful song, praising God, the whole Israel heard that song. Come to chapter 16, you have manna and the quail that the people wanted. They said, we have no food. And God for a week, for six days, he was giving manna from above, from heaven. And people have to gather them, keep it in their tents and eat. And they asked for meat and God gave them. All these things were happening the whole week. They left that place, sin, the place that they said, called sin, and they were moving to that time. And there comes another problem, but people couldn't think, my God is able to supply all my needs. They were fighting again. Even though they saw the miracle of God, they saw the power of God, they were fighting with Moses, and Moses was so much worried, and he said, why are you putting the Lord to death? You have seen what the Lord did. He fed you for a week. You never cooked. You never gathered fire. You never went and plowed the ground to grow your food, but you ate. You ate what you want. You ate to your full. But now, you're tempting the Lord and saying, there is no more. They were grumbling. And you know what Moses did? They told Moses, did you bring us to this desert of God? They kept on saying the same thing again and again. Just think of Moses having thousands of people under his care in the wilderness, where there is no water, you know, they were ready to stone him. His life was at threat. Anything can happen at any time. Tight situation, tight places. And what happened there? You know, he calls upon the Lord. And the Lord comes down to Moses. And he says, Take the same Lord which you struck the river line. Go before to the people. Take you elders with you. Go, I will be there with you. And go strike the rock, you will get the rock. He took the elders, did what the Lord told them, and the whole Israel can walk. We want to see the negative side, we go to the people in this day. What is that negative side? They were worried about 
they get to their things. You want to go to see the positive side, you go to Moses because Moses, he was in a tight situation and we know that he trusted God, that God can handle things because he knew his grace can help. Only Moses understood, not the people of Israel, only Moses understood that God who could give them manna from above can also give them water. Moses only knew the God who parted the Red Sea can do a miracle in the midst of nowhere where God can fill the people. Only Moses can do that. So the two pictures before us, the people grumbling after seeing the miracle, after seeing the grace of God. And here is Moses, the second picture. Moses, after receiving and seeing what God did, kept his faith on and he kept moving on. And that is what is needed today. Paul in Romans, in the same text, he was talking the same thing. He said that we were sinners. We were walking away. But Christ was picking us up and reconciling us with God and making us his children. In John's Gospel, we heard the reading that the Samaritan, the Samaritan woman who came to know the Lord that he is the one who can give the living water. She turned herself, she gave herself. Only the people who know the love of God can stand in the situation, even though if they died, they will still hold on to the Lord. There was a man. His uh, name is Henry Francis Light. He was a clergyman in the Anglican Church in England. He is the one who wrote this beautiful hymn, Abide with Me. He wrote that hymn in 1847, based on Luke chapter 24, verses 29, the road to Emmaus, where the disciples were speaking to Jesus, and they said, Lord, it is even time. Come and abide with us. That was the title of this uh, in Abide with us. Abide with us. And this Anglican minister, he wrote this in before he died. That Sunday morning, he told his congregation, I won't be in England for very long. And my health is failing. He had tuberculosis. My health is failing. It's very cold. I want to move. So this Sunday will be my last sermon. And I'll be giving the last communion this evening at 4 o'clock. And I will be moving on. As evening, he gave his last communion. He walked around the church building. He thanked all his people. He walked to the seashore. And as he was walking in the seashore, he could see the beauty of the sea. And he's failing, his health is failing. And the words came to his mind then Help of the heavens. And he said, Abide in me. So that is where the song came out. So he came home and he started writing the thing Lord, my health is I am done. Abide. So it so happened after writing that in that evening he left for France. That same day. The next day, he took his sickness to very worse, he was very serious. And he pointing to heaven, he gave up, he gave up his for his sin. Peace and joy. That beautiful uh, line that I just wanted. He says that heaven's morning breaks and earth's way shadows be. In life, in death, O Lord, abide with me. What a beautiful thing that he could give to the Lord. What a beautiful way, a nice situation. But he knew only his Lord can be with him in those. The 
doxology that we sang praise God for who was blessed. Was sung in a prison. <coughs> or oh, it started by a small, a young Baptist minister. He said, Praise God from whom all blessings were. And all the people started singing, Praise Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What I'm trying to say this morning is God, His grace is there with us, even though we walk in Christ. He will always help us to fight back. My God is greater than all my sins. That is what the message that God has given. What is the situation that we have? Sometimes we enjoy life. Sometimes we are sad. We say everything is gone. Like the man who said, I lost everything. But all that we can say is the Bible. If we have, not like the grumblers in the wilderness. Of course, it is the wilderness. And for Moses, also the wilderness. But all he said, I thought, what he said, I thought. Same thing we see in the life of the Samaritan. She came and she said, Our mother's worship is for Jesus. That everybody will be worshipped. She said, Lord, give me that water that I may not thirst again. And he said, Remember to do the work. It is the same. Dearly beloved, this morning, this is what I wanted to encourage you. Hold on to God, even though the situation. Maybe good today, maybe not tomorrow. But hold on. Hold on to God. He is there with us. Abide with me. Everything is growing down. The gloom is coming. And soon it's going to be the night. And everything fades. But you are there to abide with me. May God bless us. We go home with this book. That he is always there for us, and even in situations, let us follow to him, let us encourage ourselves.